Good morning, Saints. It's about <clears throat> 5 a.m. or 5.30 a.m. on Wednesday, September 13th, 2023. Just got done a little while ago releasing uh, the video on the man-child slaying the lawless one. <clears throat> and really at the end of that release, the Lord was releasing new revelation to me or a clarity that um, was just too much to pack into that um, that video. So I wanted to release something separate on that as he was bringing clarity there at the end of that video. And that is the man-child bringing judgment to the house of God. And so right at the end of that release, he was bringing a little correction to me as far as understanding timing of things and we'll just we'll just begin in revelation chapter 12 where there appeared a great wonder in heaven woman clothed with the sun with the crown of 12 stars with the moon under her feet birthing the man child we see here in revelation that man child it says will be caught up to god into his throne to rule all nations with a rod of iron. <clears throat> also in Revelation chapter 12, we see the woman who birthed the man-child, which that is Israel, you know, spiritual Israel, that is the church. The man-child are those who have come to maturity in Christ, who have lived the way of the cross, who've come out of mystery Babylon, who have overcome the carnal mind. They've overcome the lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, the pride of life. Through working with the Lord, for, through doing the work, through trembling at his word, through heeding his word, many are called, few are chosen. You know, he's called me I don't, I don't take it for granted that I'm chosen. <laughs> I just don't. A lot of people, I hear a lot of people go, I know. You know what? I don't. As Paul prayed in, in 2 Thessalonians chapter 1, you know, we pray that God would count you worthy of this calling, that we would be worthy, that we've done what he's called us to do. And just because you have a prophetic word over you or, you know, he's spoken your purpose to be part of this, there's many that aren't going to make it as far as to be part of the first fruits is what I'm talking about. So I don't take it for granted by any means and, and recently set myself apart in much greater measure and um, in resoluteness of heart and things. But Revelation chapter 12, we have this birthing of the man-child. That is the mystery, Christ in you, the hope of glory. It's coming to a fullness in a first fruits company. If there's first fruits, there's more fruit after that. But these first fruits company are going to have a ministry of three and a half years. That's not their only ministry. It begins with the ministry of three and a half years. See, in Daniel chapter nine um verse 27 i think i totally quoted that wrong in the last verse in the last video but i think it's daniel nine twenty-seven where it says <clears throat> that he shall confirm the covenant with many we with many for one week And that's many are called. Many are called. That's, um, yeah. So he shall confirm the covenant with many for one week. In the middle of the week, the sacrifice and the oblation shall cease. Christ caused the sacrifice and the oblation that was offered in the temple under the Old Testament to cease. He became that sacrifice. He was the sacrifice. As Psalm 40, sacrifice and offering you did not desire. My ear have you opened. Lay down your life. Burn offering and sin offering you have not required. Then said I, lo, I come in the volume of the book. It is written of me. I delight to do your will, O my God. Yea, your law is in my heart. 
That's the law of faith. That is the law of the overcomer. To surrender the will. So, Daniel 9.27, he shall confirm. This is talking about the Lord here. Now, the enemy counterfeits everything. So, he's going to counterfeit this. He's going to have a covenant. He's going to have a middle of the week. Okay? He, we're speaking of the Lord here, shall confirm the covenant with many for one week. It's speaking about a week in years. This is the last week of Daniel chapter 9, the 70th week. He shall confirm the covenant with many for one week, and the middle of the week the sacrifice and the oblation shall cease. So Christ already performed the first half of that week. In his three and a half years of ministry, he had a ministry of three and a half years from when the Spirit of the Lord rested upon him until he offered up his life on the cross, until he laid it down. And the sacrifice and the oblation ceased. Now that week has been held in abeyance. We came to the middle of that week. Now it's just the second half of the week that has yet to be fulfilled. And it is going to be fulfilled with those that join to him in that mercy in the laying down of their lives in the way of the cross. And this is what Psalm chapter 50, verse 5 says, Gather my saints, it's the Hebrew word, his seed, gather my merciful ones together unto me, those that have made a covenant with me, this covenant, you shall confirm the covenant with many for one week. Gather my merciful ones together unto me, those that have made a covenant by sacrifice, the surrender of the will through the way of the cross. So they joined those that will, will sacrifice, lay down their lives, who will come out, who will tremble at his word, will heed his word, who are his disciples, who do the work, right, <clears throat> to become. They join him in the middle of the week. They join him at the cross. And then, they, and then Christ's life is extended through them, or Christ's ministry is, is extended through them for another three and a half years. <clears throat> and this is quite clear in Scripture. We see this in Psalm 22. We see this in, Psalm, in Isaiah 53. <clears throat> it says, um, in Isaiah 53, it says, He shall see his seed. This is his seed, the, the man-child. He shall see his seed. He shall prolong his days. Because he was cut off out of the land of the living. For the transgression of my people was it stric he stricken, it says in Isaiah 53. He shall see his seed. He shall prolong his days. That's going to be a three and a half years prolonged through the man child. He shall prolong his days. The pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. He shall see the travail of his soul and shall be satisfied by his knowledge shall my righteous servant justify many. And that is not only through his work in the cross, it's going to be through the work of the man-child, this first fruits company that joined him at the cross. And what we see in Revelation chapter 12 in this birthing of the man-child who is caught up to the throne to rule all nations with a rod of iron. Uh, as that man-child is being birthed, the enemy, the, 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 the devil, there appeared another one in heaven, speaking of the devil, right? Um, the dragon having seven heads and, and ten crowns and... Um, And he was cast to the earth with a third of the stars, waiting to devour the man-child as soon as he was born. So he was already cast to the earth when the man-child is born. And so that would begin, you could say, great tribulation, right? When he was cast to the earth. So this gives us some indication of when this man-child is birthed. And, but what, it, what we see is this woman who birthed the man-child, that's, that's, you could call the greater church, Israel, spiritual Israel. 
she's got a crown of 12 stars, the 12 tribes of Israel. It says that the woman is led into the wilderness. Of course, the, the, the beast, the, the dragon is going to seek to persecute the church. It's going to come after the church. But there's going to be a refuge made for um, the remnant. And it says that the woman will be led into the wilderness, the Lord on, a, on wings of eagles, right? Just as he did in um, under the old covenant. He's going to bring her into a place of refuge where it says that they, the they is the man child that was birthed, where they shall feed her. What are they going to feed her? Christ, the truth, bring her into the fullness just as they came into the fullness. See, judgment begins where? At the house of God. And so the man-child's company, that three and a half years, is going to bring judgment to the house of God. Daniel 9, 27, He shall confirm the covenant with many for one week. In the middle of the week, the sacrifice and the oblation shall cease. That was at the cross. And then he's going to prolong his days. Christ's ministry is going to be prolonged through Christ in them, the hope of glory. His ministry is going to be prolonged for three and a half years. And that's going to be during the Great Tribulation, where he's going to bring judgment to the house of God. How is he going to do that? He's going to reestablish the foundations, the ancient paths, restore the desolations of many generations. We see that in Isaiah chapter 61. <clears throat> so the first three and a half years of this man-child's ministry is going to be the Lord prolonging his days. What, what did he do in the first three and a half years of his ministry? What did he do in three and a half years of his ministry? He made known the gospel, right? The kingdom, right? It's, it's within you. And, and it's Christ, you know, that mystery of Christ in you, you know, through the way of the cross and and all of this. And so he's going to bring that to fullness in a people who have entered into the fullness of Christ so that the whole ecclesia can come into fullness till we all come to the unity or the oneness of the faith and the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, that we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro and carried about by every wind of doctrine. That's going to happen by reestablishing the true foundation of Christ, built upon the apostles, prophets, evangelists, teachers. Not evangelists, built upon the apostles and prophets. Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. So reestablishing the foundations that have been lost. The church is off kilter right now. And Jesus will be in the great tribulation, the plumb line is laid down to rebuild, to get back to the foundation of him and rebuild this house for him, for the king of glory. And so principally, that is what the man-child's ministry is going to be for three and a half years, is to reestablish these foundations, judgment beginning at the house of God. And how is that judgment coming? It's through light and revelation. Now, will there be some Annas and Sapphira moments? Yeah, absolutely. I believe there will be, right? Those that won't heed, then, you know, there's going to be a fear of the Lord that comes upon, you know, reverencing um, the work of the Spirit, right? But principally, what's going on in that three and a half years? Great tribulation. What does that mean? That mean, means the enemy's kingdom is coming to fullness, that means man's way is being played out. So while Christ is, through the man-child, is reestablishing the foundations, at the same time, the enemy's kingdom is coming to fullness, right? Through the abomination of desolation, through the mark of the beast, he's having his heyday and bringing it to fullness. That the fruit of man's way, going our own way, is coming to the pinnacle of 666 of the way of man. But before the Lord brings that whole world system down, he's going to bring judgment to the house of God. 
And that judgment, how's that going to look primarily? It's through a judgment of light and truth, the revelation. And part of that judgment begins very clearly in Psalm 50. So we'll just go there again. Psalm 50 verse 1 says, The mighty God the Lord has spoken and called the earth, here's this calling, right? Has called the earth from the rising of the sun until the going down of the same. Out of Zion, the perfection of beauty, God has shined. Here's the many are called. Out of Zion, the perfect. Many are called to this place of maturity, right? But you have to, there's, you have to come into agreement with him. You have to do the work with him. Walk it out with him. You have to heed his word. Come out. You have to renew your mind, right? We have to do all these things. I don't count it, you know, just because it, he's called me to it that I'm going to fulfill it unless I, I do what he says. The mighty God, the Lord, has spoken and called the earth from the rising of the sun until the going down the same. What's he called him to? Out of Zion, the perfection of beauty. God has shined Christ in you, the hope of glory. <clears throat> and there's deeper revelation there, but I'm not going to go into that right now. Out of Zion, the perfection of beauty, God has shined. That is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Manifested to those who have ascended Zion, the city of the Lord. Out of Zion, the perfection of beauty, God has shined. Our God shall come and shall not keep silent. A fire shall devour before him, and it shall be very tempestuous round about him. This is the glory of the Lord. This is what Ezekiel saw in Ezekiel chapter 1, Ezekiel chapter 8. The glory coming in, right? Fire enfolding itself and, and the, um, the tempestuous round about him, this this whirlwind, right? This is the glory. A fire shall devour before him, and it shall be very tempestuous round about him. He shall call to the heavens above and to the earth that he may judge his people. This is where the judgment actually begins in the selection of the man-child company of the five wise virgins. There were another five that could have been part of that company, but they didn't prepare themselves fully. And so the door ends up getting shut, and that's a judgment on them. Okay, you didn't, you didn't heat it. You didn't wholly heat it. You didn't totally separate yourself. You didn't stay in this intimate place with him. Out of Zion, the perfection of beauty, God has shined. Our God shall come and shall not keep silent. <laughs> He's going to make it known. A fire shall devour before him, and it shall be very tempestuous round about him. He shall call to the heavens above and to the earth. So there, there's going to be people that are already have passed into the heavenly realm that, that died, but that are going to partake of this. Like David and Enoch and... We're not going to really go into that now, but he shall call to the heavens above and to the earth that he may judge his people who are worthy to partake of the man-child company, who have joined themselves to me in this covenant that I may fulfill, that I may prolong my days through. He shall call to the heavens above and to the earth that he may judge his people. This judgment begins in the birthing of the man-child and those who are called to the man-child company. Gather my saints, Hebrew Kadosh, not Kadosh, it's Hebrew his seed. Gather my merciful ones together, those who've joined me at the cross. The mercy, the, the laying down of their of their blood, you could say, of laying down their life for the cross. Gather my merciful ones together unto me, those that have made a covenant with me. This is the covenant. He shall confirm the covenant with many weak, many for one week. Gather my merciful ones together unto me, those that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice, the sacrifice of the will. If any man would come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross, Daily, the daily sacrifice 
and follow me. So how does this judgment come initially? In the birthing of the man child, because some who thought they were going to be part of it weren't. And so there is a judgment there that, no, you didn't do the work. You didn't do what I said. And so there's going to be a shame. And it, and it speaks about this in the scripture. It's very clear that they'll be ashamed. First John um, chapter 2, verse 26, I think it is, or 24, it says, And now, little children, abide in him. That when he appears, speaking about appearing in the man-child company, that when he appears, we may have confidence and not be ashamed before him at his appearing. Talking about his appearing in glory. First John chapter 3, verse 3 also is speaking about this. And it says, um, And now are we the children or sons of God, and we do not yet know what we shall be, but we know that when he appears, him appearing in glory through the man-child company, we shall be like him. See you, see him, no difference. We shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. Every man that has this hope, Christ in you, the hope of glory, every man that has this hope purifies himself even as he is pure. Okay, it's a hope for this to be manifested in his Christ and his hope and glory. But there's something we have to do. We have to purify ourselves. And if you have this hope, if it's so real, you'll do it. You'll do the work. <clears throat> but that hope's got to be set forth. That hope that enters in behind the veil where the, the forerunner has for us entered. Behind the veil into the holiest of all where mercy and truth meet. Where this covenant is consummated. Me and him. Him and me. That's the covenant at the Ark of the Covenant. There's so many layers to this, but um, of Revelation. So this judgment begins at the house of God. It begins with the birthing of the man-child. It begins with him calling those from on the earth and the heaven to be part of this man-child company, the 144,000. That's where the judgment begins. And it continues for three and a half years that he prolongs his day. What did he do principally on the three and a half years? He was discipling, right? He was discipling the 12 to then go out into the nations. The disciples, those who would be disciplined to follow him, to lay down their life, to, to just, okay, I'll quit my job and follow you, Jesus. I'll do this and just follow you, right? Those are those are disciples, right? They heed him. When when he when he calls them, he goes, "Okay, I'll do it. I'll go." Right? And they all laid down their lives, right? In the end, other than John, right, who just stepped into another dimension, but they all followed him. Other than Judas, right, was led by Antichrist spirit, the son of perdition, right? His soul was lifted up within him, so he he went the wrong way in <coughs> denying the Lord. But it was part of his lot. Um, but the point is, the judgment is, he prolongs his day through a people who are going to disciple the church. Just as Christ discipled the 12 apostles, those who, 12 disciples, those who would be learners that would learn of his way, that, that would come into the fullness of what he had. And so now he's going to prolong that through the man-child company who have become just like he became. And so here is the evidence, right? Here is, here it is. This is what he told us we could have and we manifested it. We've received this glorified body and we're going to manifest it to you. There's no denying the reality of this, right? Of our inheritance in him, Christ in you. This, this is all I've ever wanted, honestly, to be one with him. I don't care about, honestly, ministry, all those things. I just want 
him. <laughs> That's all I've ever wanted is him since I was a child. Union with him. I'm called to this, but I don't count it a guarantee unless I'm willing to do the work. Unless I'm heeding what he's doing. Unless I'm being his disciple. And so many are going to be ashamed. Many are called to this, but they're not doing the work. They're thinking, oh, well, I was told, you know, that was prophesied over me. I had a vision. I had an encounter that I'm a part of the man -child company. Unless you're doing the work, unless you're trembling at his word and heeding his word, you're going to be a foolish virgin. And then you'll be buying the oil from the sons of oil during the great tribulation. And then you shall enter in. So the woman's going to be led in the wilderness. That's the greater church. That is spiritual Israel where they, the man child, shall feed her. What are they going to feed her? They're going to feed her at the table, the Lord's table. The covenant, the blood of the covenant and his body, the truth. But through the way of the cross, they will enter into what the man shall enter into, the fullness of Christ in you, the hope of glory. So that's principally what the man child's ministry is going to be during the three and a half years, during the tribulation. Then judgment will come upon the whole world. And then this revelation will be brought forth to the whole world. And then the world system will be brought down. It's not going to be brought down. Judgment first is going to begin at the house of God. And that's during the three and a half years of tribulation when the people of God will get serious. <laughs> going to be a glorious thing and where hearts men's hearts will be humbled when when the soul will be humbled and come out of that place of being in alignment with antichrist with the spirit of antichrist the son of perdition this the son of destruction where our soul is lifted up and seated on that throne of our own life we're, we're gods of our own we worship our own desires But in great tribulation, men's hearts will be humbled. And they will be in a posture to, to, to step into his way. This is the judgment that's going to come through the man-child for three and a half years. The Lord showed me this, I don't know, 15, 20 years ago, that we would fulfill a three and a half year period. That second half of the week. <clears throat> and then shall be fulfilled. And so, and what is happening there? What is, what, is, what is happening during that three and a half year ministry? Through the man child, it says in 2 Thessalonians, when that wicked or that lawless one shall be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and shall destroy with the brightness of his appearing through the man-child company. It's destroying the lawless one, the carnal mind. And that begins, first of all, it's going to begin at the house of God and then be taken to the whole world. The whole system is going to be brought down through overcoming the lie, exposing the deception, and through having the proper foundation laid. I hope that brought clarity. Holy Spirit, we thank you, Spirit of Truth, for leading us into all truth. The truth which is in Jesus, as it says in Ephesians chapter 4. Let's just back up. Paul says, walk not as other nations walk in the vanity of their mind, having their understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their heart, who being past feeling have given themselves over to lasciviousness, to all this carnal fleshly stuff, to work all uncleanness with greediness. But you have not so learned Christ. 
if you have heard him and have been taught by him, discipled by him, as the truth is in Jesus. This is your life. I came to show you <laughs> the relationship you are to have with the Father, the life you are to have, the abundant life. The truth which is in Jesus that you put off concerning the former conduct, the old man, the son of perdition, the carnal mind, the worldly mindedness that joins itself to the Antichrist spirit. That you put off concerning the former conversation, the former conduct, the old man, which is corrupt according to the deceitful, the lying lusts, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind, and that you put on the new man. Christ Jesus, you put on the new man, your new identity, clothed in him. Put on the new man, which after God, let us make man in our image, after our likeness, which after God is created in righteousness. and holiness and the truth. That is his image and his likeness, his very nature and character. So Holy Spirit, I thank you for just quickening this word into our heart, bringing us in greater clarity in this hour that we may be prepared, that we may partake of this calling And if we miss the first wave, that bam, we do the work to enter in in the wilderness. The woman shall be led into the wilderness for a time's time and half a time, three and a half years, they shall be fed in the wilderness or they, the man child, shall feed her till we all come to the unity of the faith and the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. That you henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro and carried about by every wind of doctrine by the slight of men in cunning craftiness lying in wait to deceive, but speaking the truth in love may grow up into him who is the head, even Christ, from whom the whole body fitly joined together and compacted by that which every joint supplieth, according to the effectual working of the measure of every part, maketh increase of the body unto the edifying of itself in love. Shalom, shalom.